Hello, everybody. For the first part of our presentation, we asked local high school students what their thoughts were about learning, about education. And the responses we got were, honestly, a little bit scary. Our favorite was this one. Well, it's school. It's supposed to be the worst 12 years of your life. These weren't the worst. Others we got were, I'll never need to know any of this when I'm older. This is boring. I hate school. The teachers don't even care about us. There's just no point. Nobody cares about what we're learning. And I feel like we've lost our momentum, and we've lost our potential. The thing is, they aren't the only ones. 40% of students say they're bored because the material isn't relevant to them. This is according to a study by Indiana University. What we were thinking is, what if there was a solution? And the thing is, we have one. We were very lucky to have the opportunity to experience it for ourselves, and it's called the STEM program. STEM is a new method of teaching, but it's also a new method of learning. We went to the STEM Center Middle School in West Fargo, which is based off the STEM program. So now the question is, what is STEM? Well, what STEM stands for is science, technology, engineering, and math. But within those four disciplines, which are very important, a lot of what STEM is about is open-mindedness. It's a unique environment for learning where students can take control of their education, project-based learning, real-world problems, so students know why they're learning what they're learning, a desire to be educated, which is clearly lacking from our previous statements, interdisciplinary learning, where all subjects are used to solve a central problem, and 21st century skills. So why is it important for kids to start developing these skills while they're in school? Well, they all align with the top 10 skills that leading employment agencies are looking for. Self-motivation, teamwork, interpersonal skills, they all play a role in the modern workplace. There's some form of STEM in all 50 states. And here in North Dakota, we had a lot of fun at STEM. It was probably the best three years of our education, honestly. And so we talked to some STEM students to see what they thought. And they said, everyone cared about what we were learning. I really learned how to work through real problems. I was never bored at STEM. We learned so much. STEM was such a great environment for learning. We really felt like we could change the future. We were always engaged. And I would do it again in a second. So some examples of what we did at STEM. This is a picture from our interdisciplinary unit, A Long Walk to Water. For this unit, in world geography, instead of just looking at maps of Africa, we learned about the cultural geography of the place and which countries people had to walk farthest to water in. In science, we looked at water under a microscope and learned exactly what lived in the water that we drink every day. That was a little scary, but it was a great, <laughs> it was a great educational experience. In language, we published news articles to give public, yeah, blah, sorry, publicity to this problem which we didn't even know about. In math, we learned about evaporation rates and how much water people lost in the hot African sun walking to and from the well. This picture is from the capstone project for the end of that unit. And we all got together as a class with milk jugs that we collected from our friends and family and walked down to Charleswood Pond, our own long walk to water. It was about two miles. And what we were amazed by was how many people stopped and said, what are you guys doing? I mean, it was a group of middle schoolers walking with milk jugs in the middle of the school day. And so obviously some questions were asked, but it was, it was a really great way to gain publicity for that problem. And also, no one ever forgot what they learned during that project. We're never going to forget it because now we have this great experience to tie it to and all these things in the real world, so now we know that it's relevant. Another one of the interdisciplin interdisciplinary projects that we did was focused on forensics. So our teacher set up a mock crime scene, and the whole premise or the basis of this project was to solve the crime using what we were learning in all our different classes. So in life science, we learned about DNA, and we analyzed hair, and we compared blood samples. It wasn't real blood. In English, we wrote mystery stories and how we thought this was committed. In geography, we used fake credit card statements to track where all the different suspects had been, and we learned about the local geography. In math, we learned the Pythagorean theorem. We triangulated the entire crime scene. And as a little bonus, what you're looking at on the screen is a diagram that we made in our technology class, a 3D model of the crime scene, and how one group thought it was mapped out, so they brought in the footprints of where each suspect had been and how the crime was committed. 
And so when we were asked if we wanted to present about potential, STEM was really the first thing that came into our heads because we learned so much about ourselves there, so much about our personal potential as well as the potential of everyone around us. I remember a lot of people would come into STEM to see what was going on at this experimental middle school. They were trying a new teaching method. And I remember one man who came in, he was the CEO of his own company. And he asked my principal, can I have these kids' names? And she asked him why, and he said, I want to hire every single one of them as soon as they're out of high school. Isn't that phenomenal? <laughs> and, well, we, we were flattered, of course, but he wasn't the only one. We really discovered the potential of ourselves. And while some people have said they're in middle school, it's too early to start putting this kind of pressure on them, we believe that there is never too early an age to begin to learn about the power of one and what you can do. And so that's a lot of what STEM is about. But also, no matter how old you are, it's important to learn that learning is lifelong. Once you finish school, whether, whether it's middle school, high school, college, you are not done learning everything you'll need to know for your future. There will always be a new situation where there's an opportunity for you to learn something new. For example, I have a friend whose mother is deaf. So me and my, a couple other friends, we learn sign language. We learn the finger alphabet. And I don't know how, much more than how to say, my name is Allison. But it was more about expanding our knowledge and just br branching out a little bit farther, learning something that we wouldn't have learned otherwise. And so the fact is STEM is essential, because here's another fun statistic. 75% of our students are our friends, your children. They're, they're not interested. And STEM gets you interested. It gets you interested in what you're learning, and it gets you interested in learning itself for the whole rest of your life. And so we want everyone to have this opportunity. And so. Really what I want you guys to take away from our presentation today is go out and try it for yourself. STEM is more than a school. It's in our school, but it's more than four walls and a floor. STEM is a mindset, and you don't have to be at the school. You don't even have to be a student. You just, it's a mindset. You need to be able to look at problems and say, I can solve that. With the right tools, the right guidance, I can solve that. And that's what STEM is about. And so what we want you guys to do is go out and try it. Tackle that problem you've been thinking about but you're not quite sure about. Unlock your potential. Thank you.